Hey, Julie. Hi, Tony. How are you? I'm good. How are hi you? There. Good. Oh, hi, Bob. Unable to access camera. That's fine. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Tony, and thank you. Julie, do you want me to do the, be the host? And that would be great. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. I don't understand why I came in as Kristen. I came in on on my own, but that's okay. You must have been signed in. Huh? Oh, there I am. There you go. There you are. Hi, Michelle. Yes, hello, Michelle. Hey, hello, everyone. <laughs> so, well, there is a way to change your name. I, I got it for you, Bob. You can change other people's names? As the host. Wow. I know Barbara Beatty is still away, so I don't think she's present tonight. Oh my gosh. We pulled into a McDonald's. Debbie's gone into the McDonald's. So <laughs> the dogs are kind of flipping out because she's gone. Plus okay. there's all sorts of activity to to wonder at. Where are you driving from or to? From from Maine to Nahant. Ah, okay. I hope there's something for the dogs coming from McDonald's. <laughs> I don't know. There probably is. I think they have French fries in their future. <laughs> That's at least the minimum they should be getting. Uh, I'm going to go. Did you get French fries in your future? Deborah Warren, yay. Oh, good. Okay. I was That's just what, one, two, three, three. three of us. All we need is one more. I know. Fingers crossed. Bob, can you say something? To me? Thank you. Oh, there I am. Okay. I went Your to my picture went away. I went out. Oh, so good. I went to my email to make sure nobody had emailed me. There you are. There you are. I spent the afternoon typing minutes. Oh. 
I haven't done them since April 11th. So I did four hey. today, got two to go, and then tonight. Oh, there's Peter. Hello, there's Peter. And Peter. 0149, I don't know who that is. Uh, Dan McMacken. Hey. Hello, Dan McMacken. All right, so we have a quorum. Hey. Present from the Finance Committee, Julie Tarmy, Deborah Warren, Peter Barba, Dan McMacken, and Bob Vanderslice. So at what time is it? 6.34. 6.34, we'll call the meeting to order. And I, the object of the exercise tonight is just finalize the book and um, talk briefly about the town meeting itself. So did Tony sent around the draft apparently at like four o'clock or so, 4.30 or so this afternoon. Um, I read it and it, Tony, it looks like you added a couple sentences to the third paragraph. I deleted um, a couple sentences as well. Okay, um, so we should. Yeah, so we should pay attention. Go ahead. Um, essentially, those edits were after Dan Script got a better chance to look at it and review it. Um, to be clear, it's basically stuff that you know we're concerned about potentially causing an issue through the eviction litigation. Um, you know, essentially what they look for, what the attorney, you know, on that side is going to look for is any type of like public health code violation or building code violation to try to gain their client more time. Um, so, you know, the just the words in your recommendation that talked about liability or you know, cleanliness of the site, you know, those types of things were what yeah. raised the flag for Dan. So in the third bullet, um, it was striking the words. I, why don't I pull up the email? Yeah, it's it's a second bullet and, and it's striking and protect us from future liability. Your liability, okay. Yeah. Which to me is fine. Yep. Yeah, my, my concern is the third paragraph, and I guess I don't mind so much what I think the message is supposed to be. It's just the words don't always make sense. Yeah. So, I mean, I understood. I reread that paragraph, thought about our conversation, what you guys were trying to accomplish with that paragraph, and essentially what you were trying to do was explain you know, that why it was more than 300,000 and, you know, kind of justify that the town's doing the right thing, you know, by doing this the right way and spending the money the right way instead of, I guess, selling them as is. Um, but yeah. that last sentence okay. you know, that I struck, you can see it on the screen here, Mm -hmm. The property is not properly prepared or typically difficult to sell. Do not realize the fair market value of clean properties. Further, the town may remain liable if we sell the land as is to buyers who agree to assume the risk. So, um, I had kind of a hard time thinking of a way to say that a different way. So instead, right. I kind of gave you something to work off that helped explain, you know, why, um, you know, you first say it's more than 300,000 because of inflation. The follow-up question from somebody is going to go, well, well, then why'd you wait so long? Right. And that's what I tried to explain right. in that sentence. Do right. you guys chop that up? Or okay, you... so, yeah, so the sentence, I, I can't really read your red line. So the version I'm looking at it says, when the town recently obtained bids for demolition and property preparation, the bids were greater than the $300,000 preliminary estimate approved in 2021. Fine, that's what we wrote. The so wait, 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 wait. Uh, 
one one minute. So it was approved in 2021. But one of the other things people need to realize is that we were ready to present this at town meeting in 2020. These numbers, again, go back to 2016, 2017, 2018. So, I mean, I don't know if we need to put that in there, but but it's, you know, we approved it in 2021, but keep in mind that the numbers go back a couple of years before that. And I think that's important as well, because it was pre-COVID. But did the, the 300,000, does that date back as far as the rest of the numbers, or was that, didn't we kind of come up with that estimate relatively close to the no. town meeting? Um, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, yep, you're right, because it was 170. The original number was 170, so you're right. We probably adjusted upward at that point for in the inflation we knew at the time. So you're right. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to disrupt it. All right. We have so enough information. Southward. I think we have enough information there, though, uh, to justify uh, the timing without putting in that previous stuff. Yeah. And, could, and, all right. Well, let, let's Bob, just I know you said kind of, you, you didn't. Uh, I, there's one. There's one edit in that sentence that might make it sound a little, had a little more sense. The, the second red sentence, the largest factor was wanting to pro procure these services. I think that will is supposed to be a with. Yeah, with. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 let's go back. So okay. even the sentence before it, the sentence before it reads, the town did not procure the demolition project until recently because of a number of efforts that had to be completed First, well, first of all, we haven't procured anything. We have bid it. Bid it, right? A good point. Well, the town did not bid the demolition. I mean, that's a simple change. Yep. And I also think people are going to say, "Well, what were those efforts?" Um, well, a lot of it. I had. I. Had, I also had here like. The town administrator letter for more, but we already added that at the bottom of yours. Right. Okay. I mean, that really goes through the whole timeline. Okay. Right. Um, all right. So the town did not bid the demolition project until recently because a number of efforts that had to be completed first. It's still a little wordy. Mm. You guys want to adjust that? And I don't know, do we even want to, it, it sounds like we're opening a bit of a Pandora's box when we say the largest factor was wanting to procure these services, and this doesn't make sense, these services will as many vacant properties with. as possible. That should be with. With. That should will. be with. with. Okay. You don't think that should, should be in there at all, Bob? I'm, I'm just, if we're concerned about exposing ourselves it sounds like that kind of exposes ourselves you uh, can uh, you mean regarding the litigation that we're in yeah can we just say the town did not bid the bid the demolition and preparation work until recently um so be, because the properties were not ready or something really simple like that. Well, That's a good way. <laughs> well here, here's the other thing too. Tony, if you, if I know there's other factors that go in there, there's selectmen, there's the town owned land study committee. I think there was some zoning stuff that had to take place, but we also had to give these folks a year. And that, I mean, that That's to the me- That's the next sentence there. That's the next sentence, right. So, yeah. so. I, I mean, wanting, I, I don't know that we need the, 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 I don't know that we need, I don't know that we need the sentence, the lar we wanted the largest number of vacant properties. I think this includes the process of providing a one-year grace period to the current, 
you know, to the tenants to find alternative housing. That to me is the number one reason. And I think, I don't think you need the prior sentence. The largest factor was wanting to procure. I think it's the one year grace period, as well as, you know, uh, you could even, you could even, I know it's in yours, but you could even put in planning board approval, you know, things like that. Uh, uh, engineering, um, what do you call it? Not engineering, but yeah, surveying. Um, that, you know, you could you could have a couple of one word type things that go along with it. But the number one reason was the one year grace period that these people were getting. What if that sentence, the largest factor said the largest factor was um, for the houses to be ready. Uh, um, let's see, what was I going to say? Was for the houses to be ready for these services, maybe? Can we, or, or rather than thousands. one year grace, just just say, you know, we're trying to treat the residents fairly, something like yeah, that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go into that. I, I think, I think yeah, okay. the largest right. factor was wanting to prepare the houses or, or prepare, yeah, prepare the houses for demolition um, and to provide one, a one year grace period to the tenants or, or maybe vice versa because we provided the one year grace period and then want needed to prep the property that's a good idea. In, in the chat that says planning board anr and subdivision yeah. yeah yeah that was part of it i mean yeah. and subdivision and uh issue with the property boundaries coordination with the federal in the, I, I have all that in my letter no uh, I right think and yeah. I'll tell you, like every time I read my letter, even me, it gets cloudy when you get to that part because it's not really a subdivision. Right. It's not really approval by the planning board. It's an A and R. Not many people know what an A and R. A and R is. is right. It just gets I think so it's so convoluted. And that's I, that's why know, we that's why we have to stay above all of that. Yes. Right. Right. And that's and again. Again, the largest factor was the one year grace period. I mean, we could put everything else. I mean, how long did it how, just, how about, just how long how did the this? ANR take? How about this? I'll strike that middle sentence and it'll say the town did not bid the demolition project until recently because of the number of, number of efforts that had to be completed first. The largest Inclu factor includes oh. preparing the property for the solicitation, I could call it, and a process of providing a one-year grace period to the tenants to find alternative housing, period. Right, period. And then right. I can say- yeah. and, Okay, so and word, wordsmithing, instead of efforts, use like steps or tasks or something? Yes, steps is good. Sure. Yep. And, and I don't know in the way you read it, I don't know we, you need the phrase the process of you can say, say providing right. a one year great paper race to exactly period. exactly and, and i i'm not in front of a computer so i can't i can't could, type could you this. Read what, um, <laughs> tony could you read what we what we just sort of said so everyone we can hear it yeah. yes wait a minute wait a minute first of all is anyone typing this i'm, I'm writing it down okay yeah. thank you because i was going to say if not i'll type it but uh the town did not bid the demolition project until recently because of a number of steps that had to be completed first. The largest factor includes preparing the property for solicitation and providing a one year grace period to the tenants to find alternative housing, period. Yep. It's good. Or just, just then, say the most important part, the most important is or was. To procure. Something. Oh yeah, or not even to procure. Yes, right. Where do you want that? Um, the sentence where we're talking about the one year grace period. So right now that sentence says the largest factor, did you, the largest factor preparing the property, the largest factor includes preparing the property for solicitation and providing a one-year grace period to the tenants to find alternative housing. 
Right, but it's not, we say the most important factor and then we list two. Well, right. Rob, what if you said, um, um, what if you said, instead of saying the largest factor, say, um, why don't you say notably? Important, how about the yeah, completed so. first, comma, notably, um, and then the two reasons? I was actually going to say, what about saying the most lengthy being preparing the property in the one year grace yeah. period? Yeah, there you go. The most lengthy is is preparing the property for procurement or whatever you have and the one yeah. year so that people know that a whole year had to be, you know, right. you know, and, and I know people are going to say, well, you know, how come you didn't do this in the year? Well, we did. We did the INR. We did, you know, Land Owned Study Committee was notified. You know, there were a, lo a lot of things that were happening, you know, in the background while all this stuff, while that one year grace period it was happening. And then of course the preparation of it, um, you know, after the fact. Can, what do you think about saying and, and an important one year grace period? Well, it's legal, isn't it? I mean, so we know yeah. it's important. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't legally required. It was a recommendation of the committee. Oh. And in fact, it ended up being, in, you know, the meeting was in May and they got it in September. So it ended up being yeah, more, it, which I explained. Yeah, but if, if we use important, it draws attention to it. So the most lengthy steps include preparing the property for solicitation and the important one year grace period to the tenants to find alternative housing. Um, so then or, you, or Tony, again to blow your to blow your own horn plus say plus assistance to find. Um, is that no not really correct? Okay, I mean, never mind. We provided we provided assistance to those who were cooperative. So if they were attempting to find housing and needed help, uh, we were we okay. provide assistance in many different ways. Um, but we weren't, uh, you know, it's, it was more so if needed on a case by case basis, like the ones that okay. those who did not cooperate or make any effort to find alternative housing. Um, really aren't receiving assistance. Um, so then after the period, there's what's left of my sentence, which was, and it wasn't until April of 2023 that nine units were vacated. May not be I necessary. Don't needed. Okay. I don't think it's don't needed think either. Need Again, that, that's in my letter, so. Right, and we have a pointer to your letter at the bottom of this. Yeah, so do you want to, right now, the bottom, that last one says that for additional information, um, do you want to add like, and like chronological explanation <laughs> or something, or just leave it at that? I think just additional information is fine. Okay. You might want to say for details um, instead of that. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yes. For further detail? Or just for detail? Yeah. I think for details, because that shows that there are, we don't yeah. have enough details to flesh it out, and they really should look at the letter. Okay, that's your recommendation. So let me switch over to the um, whole book here. So let's see. Did it? I Thank sent you this to you you. Um, for putting all that together. So, yes. Okay, before, I'm, I'm going to be selfish here for, for a minute. <laughs> the vast powers of being the chair of this committee. Um, I am not going to be able to attend the town, this special town meeting. Ah. 
and I, you know, you'll, it, it will be, it'll be fine. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Do you, do you want to like elect uh, an acting chair or something to serve for the town meeting? And I'm, I'm going to leave that up. To the <laughs> and the the reason the reason I'm asking is I'm I'm calling in from a a, a cell phone and I'm afraid I'm going to lose the connection. So I I wanted to get that out there. Mm -hmm. I'll get you back to you. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Okay. As long as it's not a permanent position. I don't know, Peter. You might do <laughs> such an exemplary oh, no, job. No, 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 no. <laughs> Peter, I've tried you never make do a motion on that. Yeah, you should. All right, yes, so we I'll should. Move, I move that we recommend Peter Barber to act as interim chairperson for the special town meeting on September 12th. Second. Uh, I'll second. Oh, and it sounds like Joy has joined us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Barba? I'll abstain. <laughs> <laughs> um, Doherty? Aye. Uh, Carmi? Aye. McMacken? Aye. Vanderslice? Aye. Warren? Aye. So that's five ayes and one very wise abstain. So the motion passes. Okay, excellent. All right, so Tony, you, you were saying. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. I, I just want you guys to, as I said in my email, there's still some edits I got to add in the Board of Selectmen supporting statement, and I want to make a couple more adjustments to my letter, but I wanted you to be able to see the book, give it the okay, and then all I got to do is add those, make those edits, and it'll be good to go to the printer. Uh, so here's the cover. Uh, here we totally accept it with the edits Tony's mentioned. Uh, this is the table of contents. And yeah, these was, are the was that a motion? That... No, we, yeah, we're yes, going to that... make a motion on that. Yeah, I move that we accept the uh, book as written with the edits that Tony has uh, indicated. I'll second that. So, right, let me just, just scroll through this while you're in discussion before you do a vote. Yep. So, so the my only thing is, are we also talking about what we just went over, as yep. far as our okay? With edits, yeah. Yep. I'll make those edits. I'll email them out to you guys so you can see them. But I got them written, written down. Okay. Okay. And now, does Dan um, Script have to look at those again? No, that's that's all. That's fine. Basically, okay. what we just made. For edits is good. I know what he's. I know what he's concerned about. Yep. I, I kind of have the similar concerns. I'm a little. It's it's like shell shock from the northeastern litigation. You know, it's like that whole process. Is looking at, you know, the last stuff we put out for that. So I just want to make sure we don't yeah. step in. You don't. You don't want to be deposed again. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's your book, so you would be too. <laughs> oh, no, not again. Don't Do I really want to be acting? <laughs> so these yeah, are, you'll be fine. The, um, you know, this is the appendices that we all talked about. Right. I want you guys to see them. So as you can see, I got to add some uh, page numbers to this. Um, here it is. This is, I'll add your edits to this. Uh, recommendation. This is the article with your recommendation right on it. That'll be the first thing they see. Then the supporting statement of the Board of Selectmen go here. First appendix is my letter to the residents. And as you can see, I highlighted in yellow a couple things I'm going to make edits to. Uh, annual town meeting warrant article. Grab that right from your FinCom book that was on the website. Um, so this 
I wanted to show you this, this. So I got the transcript from Diane, which, you know, looks like a court document. So I basically had to, you know, cut and paste and type out um, the, the transcript literally gives you every single word said. Right. And just wanted to keep it to what I thought captured, you know, what you guys wanted to include here. So it's the motion, you know, for the plan and then the resulting votes. Then it's the motion for the 300,000. Um, as you recall, it failed the two thirds threshold by 1.6666 votes. Right. And then was reconsidered. The reconsideration passed and then it was voted again and it um, passed with the two thirds vote. So that's what I cap, that's what I pulled over from the minutes. I think it does what you wanted it to do. Yeah. Um, next is this, so I'm just going to add a title here, like the other one has a title at the top, like this. Mm -hmm. um, this is the recommendation uh, of the Finance Committee and the supporting statement of then chairman of that committee, Peter Barba, <laughs> uh, when it was in the book for 2021. Um, the, I sent you guys the bid tabulation a while ago that was a lot more detailed than this. Um, it went in, it kind of talked a lot about like, you know, the little amount of asbestos that needed to be switched to the phone. And, uh, um, you know, mercury and the thermostats and stuff like that. Again, it raised a couple of red flags for Dan. I think the important part is showing people the total amounts that were submitted. Mm -hmm. So right. I shrunk it down to the creative yeah. item spread uh, table here. Yeah. And then lastly, the A&R. Cool. Yeah. Let me thank you again. Yeah. You've done a lot of work on this. Yes. Makes at least it we know that they, if it doesn't fly, at least we know it's not for lack of effort. <laughs> yes. It's got to fly. We got to do. Got to fly. Not yeah, we really got to sell the point that we need to really sell the point that this is this is this needs to happen regardless of what happens to this property. Though, if do if, we want it to. Do we want to say literally say that in our recommendation? Uh, it's why with that, I don't know what we decided. Your last, I, I think, the part of that at, at, was right here. Without passage of this article, subsequent sale of the properties, the town may not have sufficient funds to pay the balloon payment. You could add something there that says. I mean, we, we we originally had some pretty dire language it's in there. Right. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Put it out. yeah, we said no threats. Right, right. We don't want to threaten people or make it appear that way. I think this is strong enough. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Uh, I would just okay. talk to people and and spread the word. We're gonna do. We're gonna have a little um, portion of our board of selectmen meeting tomorrow night. Is for a Q and A. Um, you know, we might put something out from the board of selectmen or from my office, like a couple weeks before the meeting. Well, it is a couple weeks before the meeting. In a week or so, you know, just just get people to show up, and it won't be a long meeting. It shouldn't be a long meeting. It should be fairly quick. Right. Uh, we need the numbers. We need two thirds. Right. You know, and, I'm not and it's sure a good idea. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bob. Go ahead. No, it, it's a good idea to just 
keep an eye on social media and see what's going on there and you know think about how uh, you would we would react on town meeting floor the only thing i was going to suggest but i'm sort of unsuggesting it as i say it is this that last sentence for additional for details i kind of wish we could um put that um, more up front uh, earlier because More I think bold. can we put it in bold that's a good idea yeah something mm -hmm. to, because to differentiate it yeah yeah it really tells it like it is um and is a compelling bunch of reasons yeah I can bold it um yeah it's, Bob I've been more I've been monitoring it I mean, it really it comes down to why is it so expensive? You know, that you got people on there who are who have argued against the plan from day one, obviously, but the question is why why is it so much more money? And the answer, the answer to that is because the market has changed since the day we voted on it, and there was a number of important things that the town had to go through before we could procure for the demo. Um, right. and, and that's really what it is. That's, that's the shortest way to say it is you're not going to you're not going to procure the demolition until you have a significant amount of properties vacant so that you can maximize the value of the, of the town's dollar and minimize the cost of the project. Yeah. And you're not going to start asking people to leave until you know that, you know, the A&R is squared away and all land related items are squared away. Um, so plus there was a one year grace period that started in September of 21. And you didn't have nine vacant units until April of this spring. So the town has moved as fast as it could but has moved carefully to not, you know, step in front of um, a process that needed to be taken care of first. Yeah, and, and I, I think I think we do it re well because in our recommendation we summarize that, and then in your letter you you give the details. Yep. So. Okay. You know, we, we, we kind of set you up and. Yeah. So um, can you, when, when you're done, Tony, can you email this around again? And I'm thinking we don't, uh, we don't have another meeting to, to approve it, but if anyone has any objections, reply immediately by email to both Tony and the rest of the committee. And then we'll have to. Bob, you're starting to cut out. Sounds good. Uh-oh. And we don't need to approve Did it you? for the vote. We can still hear you now, now Bob. Well, I don't. I, I guess that's really up to the committee. Do do we want a, a final final meeting? No. If we can, oh. if we can approve this, yeah. If we can just yeah our objections, if there are any, I think that works. Yeah, and and Dan has a motion. I don't remember whether it was seconded. But it was Dan seconded. Make... Okay. Yep. So if if we vote favorably on that motion, that, that will be the final approval. Excellent. So uh, the motion was made by McMacken, seconded by Barba. So Barba? Aye. Doherty? Aye. McMacken? Aye. Charmy? Aye. Vanderslide? Aye. Warren? Aye. That's unanimous. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Is there anything else? Um, I, I know I saw Michelle on the meeting. No? 
Thanks, Bob. No, I, I've been listening and I appreciate the opportunity to comment. Um, I think you heard my feedback from earlier and I think you definitely applied that and trying to put your messages together. So I think it's it's coming to good, it's, it's coming together. I think it is going to be difficult. Yeah. I think it's gonna be very difficult. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. That's right. That's why this is a town meeting. I know. It's really going to be difficult if, if it does lose, though. And, and I mean, <laughs> I just we everybody always worries about taxes going up and things like that. And we're going to be in a situation where we're going to be spending extra money and uh yeah, it's just it's it's not a it's not a good thing, but hey. Not an option. We have to. Yep. Do. We can't let this go on. I hate yep. to think if it does. <laughs> yeah. And I think Michelle, I I guess the the thing I would ask, and 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 I you know you don't have to answer it, Tony, but. Um, you know, there's going to be some tough questions that night in term, and also, you know, what if we don't pay the loan? What if we just forgive the loan and let the government take it back, let them decide how they want to handle it and, you know, roll the dice if they decide to do something like affordable housing? What? Don't answer. Just think about it. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll, let me... I guess what I was going to say even before you said that is there's the social media stuff that we're hearing and the narrative I guess that you're 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 getting from out from out there right now and people's initial reaction without being reminded and educated about all the things that we've done and I think that the narrative really needs to be from us and from the Blackman and in our efforts leading up to town meeting is that this is the town proceeding with what the the largest town meeting in town meeting history approved. This is us following through the effort that was previously approved by a town meeting. And this is that's our job. And this is the next hurdle. There's been many hurdles and we've overcome a lot. And this is the next one. That's right. Um, and so, you know, it's we're not we're not changing anything. We're not asking people to, you know, we're not coming with a different approach um, or a different future. We've already had that conversation, we've already decided on that. This is in order to make it happen. So I, I don't know. I think we have to figure out a way to really push that um, and get people to understand that. You know, this this narrative of, oh, this is the Board of Selectmen or town administrator trying to redo or change, or that's completely false. I, I support you. I'm just, you know, people are trying to spin different alternatives right? That's just another alternative, given where we are, you know, we're, you know, three, uh, you know, five years later. And when, you know, Peter had the committee and all the ideas were coming together and people were attending and stuff, but, you know, lots have changed, a lot has changed. So that's why that, that this idea is starting to get a little traction now. I'm not saying it's the right idea. I'm just saying, there are going to be some hard questions. And well, it had traction gonna... back then. What? It had traction back then. I it did. It, no, I mean, I, you're right. It had traction then, too. So it's, you know, a, again, you know, some of those questions are going to come up. It's going to be some same names, naysayers, unfortunately. Um, yep. But you just, if you're prepared and you have those responses, I think, you know, that's great. I just... Unfortunately, I'm just really doubtful right now about this. Yeah, well, I, I have to say, you know, at, at one point there was some social media stuff saying, oh, you know, we we need elderly housing and we have to put, you know, our elderly folks in, in these houses or, or build new houses or a new whatever uh, uh, for them. And then when you said, well, if you 
build el new elderly housing. It goes to the state, you know, if, if you follow all of the 40B stuff, it goes to the state list and then the hunt people don't end up there. And then the social media kind of went away from that and said, oh, well, you know, maybe we should make open, open space or, I mean, it just bounced all over the place. Um, right. And, and uh, I mean, it, it's, yeah, yeah, that, I don't know. It, that, it, it's well, both of those things, any of those comments, both of those ideas, both, of, you know, require the demolition of the current homes. Right. And so voting yes doesn't voting yes doesn't kill that conversation. Right. Voting no does. I wonder if we should put in one of those bullets something about um, the fact that we, we recognize that there are alternatives, but that's not what we're talking about now. Well, I don't I know. I mean we could we could speak book. to that. I, I think you talk about it at town meeting, but right. I, I think you okay. Totally okay. Look, but when those things yeah. come up, that the the point I'm making is that there's there's time there's a time and place to have that conversation. If you vote no on this funding, you're you're killing the ability to have that conversation because you're leaving these properties there. Um, so yeah. no matter what, any of those other ideas, you still need to demo the property. Right. So what what you might do is, Peter, uh, after you read the article, just stay up there at the podium and put that message out in your remarks immediately following reading the article. OK, so it would be I would be talking to one. This is required. Th this is required for anything that. Yes. Um, anything we move forward with except reusing the existing houses, which, uh, you know, um, I could, there's, there's one, there's one bit of information I li I wish we could go back and research now as far as the inflation. And that, that is, uh, Tony, I don't know if you remember, but we did a calculation on if we were to keep these houses, let's say for Nahan housing and put them into uh, kind of a, de a decent, um, uh, put it into a, you know, like a de in decent condition so that we could continue renting, renting them long term. We talked like new roofs and, and things like that. And we talked, it was roughly 35, I think $35,000 per house at a minimum. And it'd be interesting to revisit that because now you're probably talking with new roofs and everything, you're probably talking, you know, I don't know, is it because um, the, the electrical, the heating and the roofing all needed to be redone. So you're 35,000. I mean, if it's if the demolition doubled, I'm assuming the construction would probably double as well. So you're probably talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to eighty five thousand dollars to get these houses back in some sort of shape. Now, if you add that to the cost of selling a house here in the hunt, even you know, a small three bedroom ranch in the hunt is going for a million bucks. Now you're talking a million three, if that's, you know, if you're going to compare numbers, I mean, but obviously I wouldn't, you know, that would just be a speculation. Um, yeah. Don't, don't confuse the message though. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, no, it's, it, this is about regardless of what we do, these houses need to be removed. We need to remove the oil tanks and get rid of any environmental, um, I, and I don't know if you want me to even use that term environmental, but, um, you know, we want to get rid of any issues. Um, right. uh, we don't want yeah. to, I don't know. It's, it's more it's like ask, 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 ask Dan the script. Ask Dan the script. Just, yeah, yeah. When you, get uh, into, uh, when you get into that stuff, it's properly disposing of building materials. Right, right. Um, Michelle, Michelle, I have a question. When you look at social media, uh, do you see any pushback to the naysayers? Yes. Oh, yeah. People, there are people that are saying, let's move forward and honor the vote and complete this effort. Right. Yeah, because I, I there, think there's many people because they want to look at the opportunity of additional revenue coming into the town 
it'll go in the general fund and that's money that can be earmarked for other efforts. I and think people it's look at that, that it can go towards maybe seed money for affordable housing or whatever, you know, there's other yeah. things that, that people want to see done around town, you know, splash pad, uh, uh, you know, more upgrades, parks, you know, things like that. Uh, handicap access on Tudor Beach. Like there's so many float ideas that float around that didn't get CPC approval that this money could be used for those things. I think I think a lot of it has to do with there's a I, I my personal opinion I believe there's a small group of naysayers who are speaking the same language, if you will. There's a, a, a small group that hey we need to do this this and this, um, but I also I believe that there is a larger group that is well I think we should do this with it. No 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 I think we should do with this with it. And I think they kind of divide the vote um, or, or I'm sorry, they, they kind of, the scary part is they combined could shoot this down. But I, I recognize that there is a large amount of people out there that are saying, you know what, we need to, we need to just get this done. We've been, we've been playing around with it since what, 2005. Yeah. If, if this, if this doesn't pass, you're going to be staring at that property again yep. for another 10 years, maybe, yep. and it's going to affect your wallet as a resident because the yep. town is going to have to come up with 1.8. Yep. I mean, it's at some point, I, I, I got faith. I think it's all, we got to get people to the meeting and we got to educate people ahead of time. And Peter, I'm happy to sit down with you ahead of the meeting to put together yes. some Yep. I liked what Peter yeah. said about the inflation rate against the against the work to modernize those properties had we made that decision. I think, um, I mean, costs have doubled in the last two years, obviously. I think people need to be reminded of that. But I think mm -hmm. if you can come back with, you know, what those costs would have been if we did not have the one year grace period and where we are today, if those economics numbers are available for citizens to understand and re review and understand, I think that's gonna help. I mean, we see it every day in the news, but I think when you start seeing it in terms of what's gonna impact my wallet living in town, you know, that's the other thing. Oh, one more question and I'll, I'll try to be quiet. This is a borrowing article. Do we know how much it is going to cost the taxpayer per household? Is yeah, it an extra fifty dollars a year in our taxes? If you mean if if it was if we had to do it as an override instead? Yes. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we can do that analysis. I did that when we. Did the six hundred thousand dollar override, and I think it was about a hundred bucks on the average household. Okay, but, but re since remember, this is a borrowing it's, it's article, short, it's short term, right? This should only be for a year or two, not for twenty. Well, that was the other follow up. Like, how long is the borrowing article? If it's not more than twenty four months, then it's really shouldn't be, I guess, impactful on the budget. But then we don't know what what the budget looks like for next year yet. No, it's good. It, it won't be impactful. We'll be able to, I, I thought you were asking for me to put together analysis of the alternative. Oh, we yeah. don't speak to me. I think a, that I'll, well, over the cost per household. I mean, but everything is borrowed and ultimately to... impacts the taxpayer, Tony. So someone's going to ask, well, how much more are my taxes going to go up? Yeah, but they're not, the borrowing not article cool. isn't going to increase your taxes. It's just, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't uh, authorize us to go above two and a half percent. So you know the, what I mean? this borrowing is going to be included in FY 25? Right. So we don't, it doesn't require a tax overall. I think there's a perception out there that our taxes are going to go up and they, that's what they 
they struggle with when we talk about borrowing article, when you borrow money, it's going to ultimately the taxpayers paying it back. Right. So how much is right. the taxpayer tax, going to owe? Ms. Michelle, taxes won't go up because we have to stay inside two and a half. So we have to make this fit inside two and a half. And unless we treat it as an override. Right. And 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 the, the um, and the if this passes, all of the stuff, you know, we start moving with the sale of some properties to get the um, to get the loan paid off. Once the loan is paid off, we're actually going to make money. So this is going to help the taxpayer. Um, it's going to add new, um, you know, new housing stock to the to the taxes. So it's going to help the taxpayer. If this doesn't pass, we will be looking at a two and a half override to pay it. And that's where it comes into, you know, what's two, what's a $2 million, what's a $2 million um, or 1.8 or whatever we need to do to pay off the loan? What would that impact the taxpayer? Because that's, yeah. that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about if this passes, it's not going to affect our, it's going to help us. Yeah, that's why I thought that's what Michelle was asking, because that's exactly right. So here's taxes, another thinking. So here's another thinking, just purely basic math, looking at the property. Assume that we get 450 for each house slot and there's 12 house, house slots, that's $5.4 million. If you net out the 1.8 on the loan, it's 3.6. Now it's another less out, another 1.3 for the expenses. And I'm sure there's more, you're down to 2.3. So for the taxpayer, it would have been a lot higher if we didn't have all these expenses. So I think the thing is, you know, we keep chipping away at what could be profit. Yeah, right. But it's, and if, right? if we don't, if, we, if this does not pass, we're chipping even more. Right. Well, <laughs> we're not we're, chipping, we're gulping. <laughs> okay. We're going in the other direction. Right. Right. We, we, we may end up with no profit. Right. So I think the only other thing left is really, I mean, I know there's two costs in there for setup for the removal of you know all the work that needs to be done. I think people are gonna get pretty grumpy about paying twice to have the same work done because of the issue going on with the tenants. So. Yeah, that, I mean, the issue. It's not a rocket. I was gonna mention when you talked about comparing it to like up modernizing the units, that, that to me, you're starting to go down this road of the town continuing to be a landlord. Right. And totally. if the current situation isn't enough to understand like why the town shouldn't be a landlord in this scenario, I don't know what else is. And why don't we want to go down that road? We should, we've we've we got to avoid these conflicts. Oh. My, my point is we, we want to avoid analysis of these outline concepts because it will only create further paralysis. The big, the big payday at the end of the rainbow here is getting houses that are paying taxes on those lots. And the sooner that happens, the better. And any delay to this motion delays the day when those houses are paying their taxes. Right. Yes. Oh, well said. Yeah, and, yeah. and Dan, Dan, this I think- is a I think clear think Go ahead, Peter. Sorry. No, I was just going to say. I think you know. Yes, I can give a. I can, I can give a. Um, I guess a, a opening remarks based on you know why this needs to pass. And I would think that Dan, if you're at the meeting, you standing up yeah, to I say to speak to the yeah. fact that you know getting these on the tax roll quicker is also going to you know every every little bit. I mean, I, I, I yeah. I just I feel different people speak and give different perspective and different views on different things. And it's more um, I, I think it, it pulls more weight if, if, if different people are uh, speaking than just one. There's, so just to, and then I was going to just to clarify on one of the things that Michelle had said, and I don't know if we can think about how to better explain it, but sale of the property provides two different sources of revenue. Uh, the sale of the property is gonna be one-time revenue that comes into the general fund, all of it. All that money is gonna go into the general fund. 
1.8 of it has to go towards paying off the original loan. Everything else goes into the general fund and it's one-time revenue, which should not be used for um, operating expenses. So you put it into stabilization, you put it towards paying down debt, you put it towards capital expenses, you know, the standard free cash type money. But what it also does is it's gonna create new growth by new houses being developed there. And that is in perpetuity revenue that's gonna be added to our general fund that can be used for general expenses operating. Yeah, so hey, in terms of like town meeting strategy, what we, what we probably should do is summarize the messages and make sure we understand who owns each message, right? So we, we might say, Peter owns the message. We have to do this no matter what we choose to do with the property. It's, yep. you know, it sounds like Dan McMacken owns the, you know, we got to do this because it delays um, the revenue Taxi. and it delays getting this thing, these things onto the tax rolls and, and being whatever, you know, and, and if there are other messages, we could divvy them up among other members of the community uh, committee. And I'm there too, to answer questions. I think we have a solid plan. I think we're ready yeah. to pull the trigger next. Yep. 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 All right. So is it time for a, a motion to adjourn? I'll make or a we motion wanna... we... Oop. There you go. Oh. No, go ahead. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. Barba? No. Aye. McMacken? Aye. Yardy? Aye. Vanderslide? Aye. Warren? Deborah, you're muted. You can put your hand up if you want, if you say aye. Here I am, sorry, aye. <laughs> Charmy, aye. That's unanimous. All right, excellent. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Um, Thank you. Tony, we'll look luck. forward to it. Thank you, Tony. Hey, hey, Tony. Yeah. It, it, is this going to be available to watch on Zoom tomorrow? Town meeting. The, town, the special, the special town meeting. Yeah, it'll be broadcasted to the local TV channel. Um, it won't be broadcasted yeah. to Zoom because it's not something you can participate. Remotely, right. I, from, I, yeah, it'll be broadcasted probably on our YouTube page, which will be linked to Facebook and then on the local TV channel. Okay, I'm not going to get local TV channels for Facebook. sure. <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, but I'm not on Facebook. Okay, anyway, thank you. Oh, All right, also, it'll be on our YouTube channel, so you can just go to Town and a Half. Okay, awesome, cool. All right. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you all. Good night.